Hunger Games mm. song of songbird of ba- song of birds ballad and of songbird and snakes <laughs> what a <laughs> name for a movie <laughs> the newest addition to The Hunger Games. It's a sequel that no one asked for, but they made it anyway. So let's explore this with a fresh perspective and dive into The Hunger Games, the ballad of songbirds songbirds and snakes. snakes. It just rolls off the tongue. Uh I am joined by Addie Aisha. And uh, the interesting thing with this episode is that I have never seen a Hunger Games movie. Addy has seen all the Hunger Games movies. So we have completely different viewpoints on this. I tried to be optimistic. I thought it's based on this on a novel that's written by the same novelist. It can't be that bad. I watched Catching Fire, the second one of the trilogy yesterday, and I have to take that back. It was horrible. Wow. It was horrible. What was, so what is it that when compared to the original trilogy, what are the main things that just don't work in this. About one third of the movie, you asked me, am I supposed to know what's going on? If you ask that question, then it's a horrible movie. Uh, actually, Yeah, I remember I said to you when we came out of the cinemas, I'm like, there should be laws against movies being three hours long. Unless you're yeah. James Cameron, should never happen. Well, let's talk about, so Young Snow. So, they, so essentially what they do is they take the villain of the Hunger Games original trilogy and show his rise into becoming that villain. So they took the Anakin Skywalker route. Did it pay off? No. It's not at the fault of Tom Blythe, the actor who played. I actually thought he was really good. He was brilliant. He was really good, but it was just bad story arc for him. Mm. At least they didn't do the whole thing. Like, you know, in those movies, they kind of did it. You know, when when a character becomes a bad guy, their haircut has to drastically change. Like, they gave him (laughs) a buzz cut. Um, But it made sense in the story. It wasn't just like, ugh, I'm ridding myself of my hero ways. I'm not good anymore. It wasn't like Spider-Man 3 where he just, like, moves it to the side a bit. Yeah. I felt his portrayal, unfortunately, I don't know anything about the character in the original trilogy, but I thought he did a pretty good job of showing that gradual shift from a somewhat sympathetic character to this notorious kind of villain that you know is going to run the whole game. But you don't think it stacked up against the the original trilogy, Snow. So, I don't know. It's 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 a different kind of villain. Mm. Of course, he's way older. He's like 80, 85. I don't know how old he is in the, in the, new, in the originals. You need to have something substantial first, then break it down, and then create a villain. The relationship he had with Lucy Gray was just not real. Lucy Gray, where are you? Why, why does he always say Lucy Gray? Why doesn't he why does just every say, character Lucy? say Lucy Gray? No, why not just Lucy? <laughs> I love I love it. It's like, oh my God, there she is, Lucy Gray. And Lucy like, Gray! Lucy Gray! No like, one says that sh- When someone's like dying in your arms or whatever, you don't go like, Lucy Bartholomew Gray. <laughs> ah. Whatever the f*** her middle name was. But that does mm. bring up a good point. Their relationship just felt so hollow and... It was like I missed a scene or something. This was forcing something that just wasn't so there. Forced. Like the movies dragging out scenes between them, trying to force this relationship upon us when it's just not working. Yes. And I think Rachel Zegler doesn't help things either. <laughs> I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. She's not exactly the most likable celebrity right now. Nope. And man, she has a terrible track record. Shazam 2 bombed. Snow White's going to bomb for sure. West Side Story bombed and Spielberg directed that. And everyone's kind of predicted that this would bomb as a result. Anyway, um, well, there's a pivotal moment in the story where he's got to decide between like the relationship or what he wants. He has to make that choice which leads him down a path to become the villain that he is in the original trilogy, right? But the choice was not hard enough. He acted it as, as if it was hard, but the but stakes. We didn't understand. We why didn't it was understand hard. it because the relationship between him and Zegler was just. We didn't have the investment in their relationship. There was no investment. So by the time where the these crucial decisions come up, we don't care. Zero. One thing I will say though, one of the issues with movies these days, especially villain like 
or origin stories, they can never have the balls to have the villain be the villain at the end of the movie. Whereas I felt like at the end of this, Snow is the Snow that you expect him to become. I felt like he was full. He was pretty close to full bad guy by the end. How about the Joker? Joker was perfect. The Joker was perfect. Right? Joker is like the, the the gold standard, I would think, for a villain origin story. When I think about the relationship between these two characters and the love, the romance, having Rachel Ziegler sing millions of times <laughs> did not help me like her anymore. She can sing, I'll admit, but all it brought up to both of us, all it highlighted was I think she's more singer than actress. Yeah. I wish the best. Rachel Zegler in her singing career, but please stop acting. (laughs) (laughs) When you see her on stage in District 12, not in the Capitol, she had a beautiful moment in in, in a reaction, but that's the only good moment she had, in my opinion. Mm. And it was when she was singing on stage. Bringing life to other people. And, and you know, by all means, that is, I, I believe, for Rachel Zegler, that is what her calling is. Go sing on a stage, bring happiness to people through music. So, yeah, like West Side Story, she was probably good in that because it was mm. it was accentuating the positives of her yeah. as, a, as a performer, as a singer. Yeah. The funny thing is, my favorite scene of hers in this movie, she wasn't talking. Is that ironic? <laughs> I wonder if we're going to get some hate for that. Do any is there actual fanboys that support Rachel Ziegler and say like you how dare you? <laughs> Obviously, this being my first dive into the Hunger Games, I love the whole idea. I love the way the Hunger Games brings up themes of corruption and moral ambiguity, especially in Snow's character. But you really get a sense of this insidious nature between characters and how it doesn't take much before people start to crack. It makes me want to see the other Hunger Games movies to to better understand that. For everybody who has seen the original trilogy will know what I'm talking about. And you who hasn't seen the original trilogy, you might say like, yeah, I like how they did that in this movie. Fans who have seen the originals, they will know. You can't compare the two. So pretty much everything I like about this movie, you're saying... It's done 10 is times done better. 10 before. times better in the trilogy. A million times better. And I don't understand because it's the same director. Really? It's the same director. So the original movie, the first one, The Hunger Games, it's called. Gary Gross, I think it was. Gary, his name was. The Gaza. Director. <laughs> Gaza. Good old Gaza. Gaza. Um, the Gaza. Gary was the director for the first movie. Uh, brilliantly done. Then Francis Lawrence became director of the second, the third, the fourth, and the prequel. So you're saying the guy, the, the person who directed 2, 3, 4 is the one that directed this one? Not just the director. Most of the crew is the same. Different scriptwriters. Yeah. Uh, same cinematographer as well. And yet they, they... Same producers. So what do you think happened? I have no idea. Like I said to you before, I'm a firm believer that the 10s, 2010 to 2016, 17 were brilliant movies. After that, it just went downhill. When wokeness kind of started to take over. And what does my mentor do besides bring me roses? But what, what about this whole concept of them having mentors? Is that done in the original trilogy or was that purely... No, that's un- the original. Oh, that was. Yeah. It's done differently. I reckon way better. It's the fic- the victors from previous years from your district is going to become your mentor. So this movie was presenting it as like the first year that they were having mentors. Yes. I think. Again, it's so unclear. But this one, you couldn't... Rem- we it's watched been, it two days ago. I, and you can't remember anything. And I have to tell you a secret. What? I watched it twice. You went to watch this movie again. I watched it before I watched it with you. Oh. I watched it a second time with you. I had to watch it again because I want to make the notes and I want to make sure every everything I saw, if it became better or worse the second time I saw it and if I was still as confused. Was it worse? It was slightly better. But still bad. Horrible. Wow. That's commitment, man. i got to say, there's no way I'd watch this movie again. No. Philip Seymour in the originals, by the way. Yeah. You like Seymour, right? I love Philip yeah. Seymour. And you said... Brilliant. Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. Josh Hutcherson. That's a hard name to say. Josh Hutcherson. Fast. Liam Hemsworth, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, Elizabeth Bank, Woody Harrelson, Stanley Tucci, uh, Donald Sutherland, as you know. Uh, Lenny Kravitz. What? Does he sing? Does he just pull out a guitar Le- no, and start Lenny Kravitz, wailing? No, he's, he's an actor. He acts and he's 
Brilliant. He doesn't come in to sing. He comes in to tell a f***ing story. Why can't Rachel Zegler do that? Come in to tell a f***ing story. Stop singing. <laughs> Look, I get it. I get it. In the novel, she is a singer. Yeah. I assume that's how she brings hope to the people. But it just became a musical. Soft eyes, kiss children. And that's what we were thinking the first time she sang. Because I was like, why is this character, who's meant to be like enslaved and forced to go into the Hunger Games... She stands up on this podium and it's in the trailer, so it's not spoiling anything. But she does this massive song and dance. And I was like, wouldn't security just hit her with a baton, and, and shut the, her up oh, dude, and grab her? And then she does that bow, right? Yeah. That's a f***ing ripoff from the original movies. That's Katniss Everdeen's move. That's Jennifer Lawrence's move. She does that. And while we're at the topic of her singing, it's supposed to be an emotional thing where you move the audience. Yeah, I saw someone just like next to me just munching on popcorn like, and I was like... That's an aggressive popcorn eater. (laughs) Yeah, it was quite aggressive, but it was entertaining to watch. Um, (laughs) More entertaining than the movie itself. (laughs) Well, well, yeah, it's weird. When when the characters are really emotional and you don't feel something, it, it's very awkward. You distance, your, you distance yourself from the movie. You know in sitcoms when they have that giant like light that says applause or yeah. laughter? It's like that, but you're saying to yourself, I don't want to. Oh, my God. Actually, <laughs> I, just, I just thought of the best note to bring up. So this is my first time watching a Hunger Games movie. So I don't know what to expect when the, the sirens are going off and everyone's competing how that usually flows, right? But in this, Rachel Ziegler turns into John Wick and it does not look right at all. I mean, she is dodging everything. She is playing Bloodborne on the highest difficulty and she is perfect dodging every attack. Like, I just did not understand it. The movie did no development or build up to make me believe that this character is able to dodge 10 million attacks at once it doesn't look believable amen so i'm guessing that jennifer lawrence is a lot more believable way in more that believable. role she's in shape she has a skill she can fight yeah but even then she gets overpowered with luck and with a bit of dodginess she gets out of it and it's just believable he's like oh fucking hell it was close yeah, you don't feel that once. There was no suspension of disbelief that L- Lucy Gray would die at any point. Nah, there was no real suspense. You knew she was she was invincible. Yeah, and the way that plays out, it it just always feels like Deus ex machina. Like there's always something that manages to pull her out at just the last minute, mm. and it gets tiresome. The reason why they underdeveloped all of those kind of things, it's because it's only the 10th Hunger Games. The arena is way smaller. Wow, so this sounds like we got the the boring shaft by going back in time. Thank you. Like this actually was a disadvantage oh, because yeah. the Hunger Games itself was so limited. But yeah. like, I mean, there was some interesting things. Like they had the drones, but they were shitty drones yeah. because of the technological yeah. limitations. So that was funny. But did you feel when you watched The Hunger Games this dying need to know how he rose to power and became? Nope. So it's not like a, a, another dragging of a franchise where yep. it's like, we got to go back in time to show you how this becomes this, even though no one actually gave a shit. Yep. So you got to fly around your face. <laughs> Viola Davis was brilliant. She was by far the best actor in here. Mm. She was unrecognizable. Mm hmm. Again, I think the character was horrible. I think just the, the, the complexity of the character was just non-existent. But Viola Davis gave life to it. She did brilliant. She made it fun. She made me like want to know more exactly. about her character. You mentioned the drones before. Mm. Does even matter? Like, how did they have facial recognition on the drones? But they can't have a normal TV. Oh yeah. Well, it's a weird. It's a weird kind of dynamic that the movie's got, where it's like it's the future. But it's a weird future where it's like, what if they their technology is like 1950s version of the future? Yeah. 
It just looks weird. The TVs are just like this, this old TVs with like the button scan kind of thing. I liked but that though. I, don't get me wrong. I like it. It just doesn't make sense that you have a drone <laughs> that can fly. That's what drones do. They fly with facial recognition to the person you, you're buying to. Can't control it. Whatever. But then you also have TVs with only knobs and no stable connection. It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so would you recommend this to fans I'm of the gonna original I'm going to give it a one games? out of five. <laughs> you know, what? I'll give it a 1.5. I'm going to give half a point to Viola Davis, cranking up the movie a little bit, and a half mm. a point to uh, the Tom Blythe as Cory Lennon Snow. I would definitely recommend everybody to watch it. Come up with your own opinion of it. I will give it a two out of five. But having said that, if I go back to the original trilogy and it's like 10 million times better, I'm probably going to rate this worse. I think personally, if I was to like sum it up, I liked the whole gradual transition from from sympathetic hero to, to villain. It's not the best in this movie. The Joker is still like my gold standard for that. Watching Snow transition, that was a true highlight. And there are some some really nice scenes that caught me off guard where I was like, whoa. And maybe that's because I haven't seen other Hunger Games. Um, I, I love the concept of the Hunger Games. And the good thing about this movie is it makes me want to explore the other movies. I cool. I it's hooked me into wanting to watch the rest of the franchise. Um it's intrigued me on the premise, the whole concept of the Hunger Games, but I don't think there's really enough there to keep someone's attention for 3 hours. Emotional moments just miss the mark. The relationship between Snow and Lucy Gray just isn't that interesting and when that's the whole movie pretty much, it's disappointing. Okay, guys, uh, it was really great seeing you. If you enjoyed this review, please like, share, and subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're listening to us on Spotify, please leave us a review. And, yeah, that's us, guys. We'll see you next time.